Welcome to Up to the Minute. It is Friday, September the 4th, finally Friday. Boy, it's good to be a Friday, and we got a three-day weekend coming up. But you know what? Does it really matter whether we have a weekend or not? We're all working remotely anyway, but I know one person it matters to you. Brittany Pacheco joining me now live in her home studio. Good morning, Brittany. Hey, good morning, Todd, and good morning to everyone joining us for this morning's Up to the Minute. We always appreciate you being here with us to share your morning. And as Todd said, yes, we do have a three-day weekend coming up, but we'll talk a little bit more about that later. But at this time, I do want to ask everyone to go ahead and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and to also head over to YouTube. Click that subscribe button and that notification bell so you can be the first to find out the latest from us. And last but not least, we always need your help, our audience, because we want to grow our audience even farther. And so if you share this podcast, we're going to get there quickly. So be sure to click that share button here on this live podcast and we can get this great information out to the masses. That's right, Brittany. Thanks a lot. We're going to be with you shortly. We've got about a half hour coming up with your HCC news and information. Of course, special guests on the show, Dr. Dejan Grisby. And Dr. Grigsby is the chair of the biology department, the Academic Center of Excellence. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me today. Absolutely. We're looking forward to discussing the uh, job possibilities for your center of excellence and your students. We'll be back with you shortly. But first, it's hashtag finally Friday, which means we always have a special guest on Friday. Dr. Jimmy Adams, his day job, he's the college operations officer for HCC Northeast College, but he's also our resident poet. Good morning, Dr. Adams. Good morning, everybody. How are y'all? We're doing Glad great. It's good to see you here. I know you got a lot of going ons at the uh, Northeast College right now. A few act, a few moving parts on the campuses, and you're looking forward in the next month to welcome students back there. Yeah, we got it, man. And uh, we got our trustees doing a tour today. We're also getting all of the new signage put up at the campus, and uh, classes starting. In, some classes starting in September. We've got some continuing classes with truck driving. Uh, the EMS uh, fire they're going on right now and then we got stuff opening up uh, in October as well so a lot going on it's exciting to hear things uh, opening at least in a limited fashion on our campuses it's going to look a lot different when you return there folks but we'll have more on that later Dr. Adams you've got a piece of poetry you're going to share with us this morning called epiphany of a man maybe you can tell us a bit about that well a little bit you know I'm a pretty very spiritual person um, uh, this is more about uh, understanding who you are and realize that uh, you're in this, you're not in this alone. Um, and, you know, a lot of times we've got to walk by, by faith, not by sight. And, uh, you know, trying to survive in this environment that we live in today, you've got to believe in yourself uh, and, and connect with that, that spiritual realm to get through these things. So this is kind of what this poem is all about. We're looking forward to hearing it. Why don't you go ahead and uh, get started with it? Okay. Um, Okay, Nathan, you can go ahead and uh, cue the music. The dictionary defines an epiphany as a sudden intuitive realization. And understanding who you really are is a revelation. And this is my reflection of this realization. It's titled, An Epiphany of a Man. I can see clearly the pain that's gone. And I understand now I was not alone. My chains have been broken. My wounds have healed. My eyes are wide open. The truth has been revealed. My skin was tough in order to last. And my shadow, it it passed and cast the reality of the past. Those dark clouds hanging over me, they cleared so that I 
could see. And I realized I had the key. I just had to believe in me. Because dark was the light. It's no longer my fight. I know God has my hand. It's a revelation, the epiphany of a man. Thank you. Dr. Adams, from what I understand, you wrote this piece back in 2009. And what I like about your pieces is I know you do a few little, maybe a few edits or revisions along the way, but they're still pertinent, uh, you know, 11 years from uh, when they were actually written. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's the thing, the, uh, you know, life goes on, you know, for all of us every day. And it doesn't matter if you were born, you know, 40 years ago or in living in that environment or living here, we all, you know, go through things and it may be in a different form, but we all experience a lot of these things, you know, as we, as we grow up and go through life. So yeah, everything, most of these, these poems are kind of come back 360, you know, uh, you know, as we, as we go through life. So, um, yeah. I imagine it must be like a, a piece of music because you hear about musicians and artists who write songs years ago and then they pull them out when they're doing a new album. And they're like, oh, I wrote this 10 years ago, but I was able to finish it now. I imagine your poetry pieces might be something to that. It's pretty, pretty similar to that. Um, and, you know, when I wrote these, uh, you know, I was feeling something at the time. Uh, you know, I, I didn't have a whole lot of self-belief, but, you know, when you rely on you know things out of this world you know i'm not in control you know we're we're counting on god time and things happen for a reason and so uh and you know with most a lot of my poetry i actually go back and put the music to it and you know it's almost like a song i just it's just not <laughs> in a in a uh, format of a song but uh you know the words are kind of like lyrics to me so um yeah, so I, I try to fit the music to the feeling of the poem. And this is kind of that religious, spiritual kind of uh, gospel kind of feel to it. It's an incredible piece, and we always look forward to having you here on Fridays. I know you've got a lot going on today, and you have to jump off and uh, take care of some business. And as you mentioned, you got a lot going on at the Northeast College right now. Yeah, we, uh, we're doing our walkthroughs of all of our campuses with the trustees today. Looking forward with the, to doing that. We have the chancellor here with us and uh, some of the board members. So it's gonna be a uh, long day, but exciting day. So we're going to all five campuses and uh, looking forward to that. Uh, so. I bet you are. Give the trustees the best from us and you have a great three day weekend, Dr. Adams. We'll see you I'm next gonna time. do it and you guys take care of yourself. Look forward to seeing y'all next Friday. That sounds good. Thanks, Dr. Adams. All right, guys. And as you know, here on uh, on Up to the Minute, we always feature our center of centers of excellences and talk to you about what's going on at the COEs. Well, we're featuring the Academic Center of Excellence, and we've got Dr. Dejan Grisby, Grigsby, who's joining us, and you are the chair of the Biology Department of the Life and Natural Sciences Program. Good morning again. Good morning. Thank you so much. How enjoyable. I really appreciated that um, poetry reading. Thank you so much. We, we, it's always a pleasure to have Dr. Adams on every Friday. Kind of starts your weekend off the right way. It gives you a little time yeah. to reflect and uh, to uh, get ready for uh, this time, at least a three-day weekend. I want to talk our begin our discussion to talk about biology and how um, this could be a pathway to getting into the medical field um, through HCC's programs and the things that we offer. Maybe you could talk about that because right now with COVID and uh, medical workers needed right now, there seems no better time if you want to get into the medical field, now is the good time to do so. Sure, you're absolutely right. So a degree from the biology department from our Earth Life and Natural Sciences Division actually um, provides a lot of student opportunity. We have proximity to the largest medical center in the world. And so we're really able to leverage our programming in order to help feed that pipeline for the students to go straight into some of the places that they're really excited about. So we really have two uh, degree programs. 
we're a STEM discipline, uh, science, technology, engineering, and math, of course. And we have two associates of science degrees in biology. One is for uh, majors, so biology majors students who get the associates of science in that track they are looking more towards be uh, continuing in a biology educational field, perhaps going into research positions, which our medical center and our city is very poised to be involved in a lot of that on the horizon. Um, and also to go into the pre-medical uh, educational fields that perhaps leads them to MD degrees or PA degrees, physician assistant degrees. But we also have another Associates of a Science in Biology that tracks directly into our health sciences, our allied health sciences um, programming. So these help. this helps lay the foundation. A lot of our coursework lays the foundation for students to even matriculate into our own Coleman Health Sciences uh, College where they can you know, move on into respiratory therapy, histo technology, and et cetera. There's various and a sundry further fields um, and opportunities for our students if they matriculate through our biology programming. Let me ask you this. I know a big part of biology and all these programs you mentioned are the lab components. And over the past several months, it's been challenging to say the least to deliver those lab components to students. How is your department doing that? And what has been the response of the students? Sure, that's a great question. So we've always been uh, you know, focused on trying to provide what we call the world-class laboratory experience. Uh, we're very fortunate in the sciences that hands-on delivery and active learning is just the hallmark of biology and the sciences. We get you in the lab and you put your hands on in order to enrich your learning, in order to really deliver the, um, the uh, learning outcomes, et cetera, that we're interested in transferring. So we're, we're already starting on that foundation, the hands-on. So then when we transition to the online, the virtual, the remote, it, it did take some consideration. In my department, very lucky, I have a team of curriculum leaders that work for the programming already. And what they were able to do is to help. We worked in teams, we worked uh, individually to help ferret out some additional resources. But what we were able to do was to evaluate various online platforms for the purposes of simulation, for the purposes of providing dem demonstrations, which we just call demos for short. And then we were able to package that around our standing curriculum in order to deliver um, a same or similar uh, experience for that experiential learning that we're known for and that we really rely upon to enrich our student learning. And so those curriculum leaders were just so integral in order to do this and do it successfully. And then when we deliver that, to the students, we also worked very closely with the resource providers. So our resource providers helped us transition some of our resources that we use on the ground into electronic delivery and that we couldn't have done it without them. And the student feedback is various because you do have students that really appreciate the in-person, hands-on, face-to-face learning. And we're having to also bring them along on a little learning curve so that they can learn to also appreciate in the remote, in the virtual world. And then our faculty are all on board so that we can help deliver it in the best means possible. So it's been, it's been a journey, but it, it really uh, required buy-in by all parties and that buy-in happened. And so we're looking to bear the fruits of that over this course of the fall, for sure. Are your programs all two-year programs and can you transfer into four-year programs and are there programs that need more uh, college after the four-year degree? Sure, that's a great question. So we work with our regional partners. We work in a, there's particularly, there's a program called GPS and it's a pathways program where we work to articulate curriculum. So at the end of the two-year degree, our students have opportunity to join the workforce already but some of them are interested into transferring, as you said, to a four-year degree program. And so we work with our regional partners, uh, the universities in the area, the universities in the larger region, in order to articulate our education, to make sure that what they learn at our institution, at Houston Community College, directly transfers as part of a prerequisite or as part of a foundational course 
into further four year programming. And so because we work towards that proactively, our students are really well healed and well prepared to matriculate into those programs where they see fit. Past the four years, that's largely for the students that are interested in perhaps being in the biological majors um, uh, programming so that they go and get a four year biology degree and then they want to transition into a particular scientific research discipline, for example, they may require some learning past the four years for sure. And then we also have persons that want to go and become the physicians or the physician's assistants. And so then they require some learning past the university level as well. But our two year programming sets them up to be able to uh, scaffold and uh, towards any one of those pathways. They have a lot of opportunity when they start here and get their first two years. Absolutely. You know, people wonder if that's really happening. I can tell you as a, a testimony that my both my uh, wife and brother-in-law went to HCC for two years. My brother-in-law is now a podiatrist and oh, he started at HCC and my wife is now a registered nurse. And uh, both of them received their two year degrees from HCC and they moved on to other colleges within uh, after uh, going to HCC. So, yes, folks, it really does happen. You can be a doctor and start off at HCC and, and have a very successful career. Let's talk about students that can work in maybe their field while they're attending college. How common is that? Because it it it, le it really helps. At least I know I was fortunate enough to work in my career while I was attending school. And that helps tremendously, whether you're an intern a paid intern, one way or another, it contributes to it. How common is that when you're getting a biology degree or other degrees through your program? That's absolutely what we look for, actually, because whenever we can help build the portfolio of the students while they're on our campus, then we're doing them a greater service because when they get out, they have a portfolio that they're able to um, rely upon and it helps them in uh, future industry application, for example, because then they can say, no, I actually have exposure and experience. And so we look to uh, actually um, find and identify, locate those internship experiences like you're talking about, because if we can plug a student into that, then their uh, opportunity field broadens just exponentially. So we enjoy the internship programs. We do like it um, if students are able, we actually some of our students are in the industry and then they come for further enrichment and further education in their field as you probably are aware most fields on the ground are going to change they're going to update and all of that is necessary and when we get those students in our class they're also very good as peer teachers so that they're able to collaborate with their peers in the class because they can say i'm in the industry right now I'm here to further my skill set, to update my uh, background, my education, and I can tell you where you're headed. So then they actually help their other students in their cohort. So it really is helpful when we have those direct hands in the industry and when our students are partaking of them. And we look for that. We depend upon it. Absolutely. Dr. Grigsby, we're in challenging times right now. Of course, things changed for us uh, exponentially back in uh, March and we've been delivering education online. As we get students back in the buildings on a limited fashion, do you see what we're doing now with this delivery of online education? Do you see this being the wave of the future and how you're gonna be functioning now, at least for the next couple of years? I think what the online educational growth has done is provided us an extra facet or platform with which to reach out to the Houston community. We already knew that we had students all over our community that we look to serve that had other things in their life that were just as essential to them as furthering their education. And they were looking for ways to balance that. So being able to really put some thought behind online delivery for our sciences, being able to support our, our students where they are, that's really helpful um, in that they are able to uh, they're able to continue with their lives as they know it. And then they're able to put their feet into educational pool as well. If we can uh, broaden our ability to do online delivery of instruction and do it really well with some thought and with understanding that we don't wanna lessen any of that experiential learning, for example, that we do in the laboratory, 
I think that what we're going to do is just provide larger service to our Houston community. And so I do see that it just becomes that additional facet, another leg to the stool, so to speak, in order to do all of that. It's a new world we're living in, but it's also an exciting one uh, because we, I think we've all figured out new ways of doing things in innovative ways as well. Dr. Grigsby, thank you for being here this morning and we look forward to seeing you in the future. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Have a great weekend, everybody. Happy Labor Day. Happy Labor Day to you. Thanks a lot. Brittany Pacheco, you know, Brittany, it's a little bittersweet this morning. We got a three day weekend, but we're missing one of our cohorts this morning. Uh, Frank Cooper, who's usually one of our co-hosts on uh, Tuesdays and Fridays, a little under the weather this week, recovering. Uh, so we wish him the best and we hope to see him next week. Absolutely. Frank is, you know, just awesome to obviously work with, to uh, bounce ideas off with, and for Utah to talk sports because, you know, I don't talk sports. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I'll give you a, I'll give you a little hint. The Rockets won the other day. They start a new playoff series tonight. They're going to be playing the L.A. Lakers and LeBron James. I'm sure you've heard of him. I, I'm familiar with what's going on with the Rockets. I mean, I do know something. I just don't. I'm not involved like you know Frank and the other guys are. But that's okay. But because uh, this weekend is a three day weekend, that means that we here on up to the minute will not have a live show on Monday. So uh, that also means that all instruction, yes, this includes online instruction, because I know I got a lot of questions about that during the hurricane. Uh, that means that no classes will be held. We will resume our regular operations on Tuesday. And let me get the date right, September the 8th. Just want to make sure I, I give you all the right yeah. information. So uh, we'll be sure to post all this on our social media. That way uh, you all are very aware of what's going on come Monday. So yay for three day weekend. <laughs> yeah, that's a good deal. I, I know you don't like sport. You don't really talk a lot of sports, but I know you're familiar with this. You remember Garrett Cole, right? From the Astros, major star pitcher. I know you're a big Astros fan. Absolutely. Yep. Well, guess what? He's not doing so well in New York. They're already complaining about him. They gave him like a $330 million 10 year contract. And they're wondering, has it been worth it? So uh, there you go, a little Astros news for you, you know? But if you remember, I know you follow the Astros. Last year, Garrett had a year where he started a little slow. So, you know, in the long run, I'm sure he'll be fine. But there's New York for you, already questioning whether or not it was the right signing. Shouldn't have left Texas and shouldn't have had to cut the hair. Just saying. I mean, that that probably had a lot to cut do with it. Cut the hair and shaved his beard, too. Yeah. Exactly. That that had a lot to do with it. So, um, yeah, well, you know, keep the beard. I would have let him have the beard. I don't know. I wouldn't have made him shave that off. Exactly. Hey, so, uh, yeah, we'll be off on Monday. Everyone's got a three day weekend. If you work, if you're faculty, staff or students with HCC, have a good weekend and enjoy yourself. Uh, the Chancellor's Excellence Award. It's that time of year again, Brittany, and uh, he's, they're taking nominations. Absolutely. So this is open for our faculty, staff and administrators who make significant contributions and display exemplary achievements, innovation and educational excellence. Um, and this is the deadline is next Tuesday, September the 8th. So the CEA uh, award has increased to a $5,000 award per individual or a $500 award per team member. Nominations should clearly describe a project or unique effort that contributes to the achievement of the strategic plan. So that's what it is. Be sure to check your emails uh, from the chancellor's office in regards to the Chancellor Excellence Award for more info. Student virtual lobby. Students, you have questions, we have answers. You can log on to the virtual lobby by going to hccs.edu slash virtual lobby. And uh, they have extended hours, Mondays through Thursdays. They're open 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Fridays from 8 to 5 and tomorrow and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. You can get your questions answered via a Zoom call, a callback or email. Just Take, it does take some time because they're very busy at this time. Please, as you've mentioned before, Brittany, don't put in multiple requests for the same question. That's just going to back things up even more. Yeah, absolutely. Because obviously we had that setback due to Hurricane Laura. So I know our staff are still working diligently to make sure that all questions are being answered in a timely fashion. Uh, now on the website, it does say, wait about two business days for a response. Uh, if it goes beyond two business days, just please pack some patience. I mean, they're working 
tirelessly. I know for a fact that they're receiving hundreds of requests on a daily basis. So that's a lot to go through, not enough hours in the day. So we do appreciate everyone who has uh, been very patient with our staff as we try to navigate through uh, this whole ordeal. So, but be sure to utilize the virtual lobby by heading to hccs.edu slash virtual lobby. Student Coffee Talk, more student questions answered via WebEx. Uh, student Life has launched its own Coffee Talk video series. It's a live series. Uh, Tuesday, September 8th is the next one. They'll be talking with counseling. If you have some questions for that. Wednesday, September 9th, tutoring at 2 p.m. And then there's also one on Thursday, September uh, 10th, and that's for career services. That happens at 2 p.m. Uh, you can visit hcc.presence.io slash events. Of course, we're gonna have all these website address in the post for this show. Uh, dates for the fall schedule, some ones to remember, Brittany. Absolutely. So we already started our regular semester, but now we're going to talk a little bit more about our second start. So the deadline to register for second start, Todd, is September 11th, which is next Friday, a week from today, because our classes begin September 21st. Now, September 28th, all faculty uh, for in-person classes specifically will return to the campus campus in preparation for the following week, October 5th, when students who are enrolled in the Flex Campus and or lab-based courses will return for their in-person instruction. So lots of dates to remember. Don't worry, we're gonna put all that information out on a graphic uh, for you shortly. And uh, if you're interested in registering for Second Start, be sure to do so today. I say today because you got a week before the deadline head over to hccs.edu slash now to check out what classes are available for Second Start. So that's uh, happening as well. Of course, register early. You know, the, a lot of, especially the Flex Campus and the lab-based courses could fill up quickly because they're a lot smaller. So keep that in mind, register as soon as possible. Outdoor Wi-Fi zones. So you're having maybe some problems connecting at home. HCC is offering some free hotspots on our campuses. Uh, the HCC campus buildings will remain closed though. But such parking lot resources are being used as outdoor Wi-Fi zones, and they're available for you students to connect to the internet. Keep in mind, you won't have access to restrooms because the buildings are closed. Also, will not have access to outlets to charge your cell phones or computers. So please keep all that in mind. Uh, but these outdoor Wi-Fi zones are available to you. If you'd like to find out more information, visit hccs.edu slash outdoor Wi-Fi. Definitely, Todd. And also we have an online services toolkit right at the fingertips for our students. So students, if you're looking for a one-stop guide for technology, textbooks, tutoring, and much, much more, be sure to utilize this free resource you can do so by heading to hccs.edu slash online hyphen toolkit. If you are worried about your health and want to get tested for COVID or you just want to get tested just to see if you if you have it currently, well, you can do so in several HCC campuses. We're not going to go through each one of these, but you can find the information in the post for this. We do have campuses for sites available for free COVID testing, and that's for everyone, not just our students, faculty or staff. More information in this post. And also, Brittany, finally, uh, the census is still going on right now and we need everyone to uh, stand up and be counted. Exactly, uh, Todd. I know yesterday there was a census representative here in my apartments making the rounds, you know, getting that head count. And we need you to do your part to stand up and be counted because this informs how billions in funding will be spent. This impacts public services, clinics, schools, that includes HCC. So be sure to do your part and once again, participate in the census. The deadline has been extended to October 31st, but head over to HC, I'm so used to saying HCC, I'm just kidding everyone. Be sure to head over to 2020census.gov to participate in the census today. So that wraps up the show for today. We have uh, some guests next week. Remember, Monday's Labor Day. We're not gonna be here. We're gonna be off on Labor Day. You will too, if you're faculty, staff, or students of HCC. Uh, remember uh, that we will have next week some several guests, including uh, Sean Atmishi, Dean of the Digital and Information Technology Center of Excellence, and also 
Dr. Michael Webster. They'll be talking about various programs uh, throughout our college. So make sure you tune in for that. And of course, we'll have regular guests, uh, Chief Greg Cunningham, who's Brittany's favorite guest because he pops up right around the middle of the week and she's always excited about that. And then virtual family fun on Thursday. What do we have coming up for that, Brittany? It'll be the Lone Star Flight Museum from its new home at Ellington Air Force Base. And I, I love to talk to them because I did check out that flyover they had a couple months ago. So that was that was really awesome. And I love just to hear what they have to say. That'll be next Thursday. We've got a very packed week for you, fitting it all into a four day week. Don't miss it. We're here live every morning when HCC is in session. Today, no exception, but we'll see you on Tuesday. Have a great holiday weekend, everyone. Enjoy your time with your family. Get outside if you can. Make sure you mask up and be safe. I'm Todd Duplantis. We'll see you at 10 a.m. live on Tuesday.